Yale Greenfield, aka The Live King, back with another vlog. Hollywood Park Casino. The opening pictures that you saw of food. As I've told you before, my number one passion outside of poker. The people I was with, this is really what I want to talk about today before I get ready to start my session. One thing I've been really fortunate about in my time in poker is to meet really, really smart people. The three people I was out with yesterday are all consistent winners at the 10, 20 level or higher. So when you're learning from your friends who are better than you, you just basically need to stay humble and know that you don't know everything and that there's so much to learn in this game. It's an ever evolving process. And that's something that I try to take with me into every single session. So after I have a dinner with these guys, those things are especially on my mind, the things that I learned from them while we talked poker. So I'm gonna keep that stuff in mind today here at Hollywood Park and try to uh, find, find a W. I'll be back with you guys either mid session for an update or at the end with a recap. Talk to you guys later. First hand here, we pick up pocket kings facing an under the gun one limp and we make it $45 to go and the limper does call. So we're headed heads up to the flop here. And we get a good flop. It's jack four two, two tone, pretty good flop for us. And when he checks, I think we can bet one third or two third and I decide to bet two thirds and he does put in the call. Headed to a turn here, and this ace is gonna smack our range. All options are on the table, bet one third, bet two third, and rarely check. I do go with one third, which I think is a mistake, and that is because I think pocket kings benefit most from a check, but when we do put out this bet, the villain calls, and we're headed to a river. River brings in the front door flush, and the villain now decides to donk into us for 225. And facing this donk bet, I think this hand is a little too weak to call. Don't really want to turn it into a bluff against this guy. And I just decide to let this one go. This hand has three blinds because of the traveling button rule in Los Angeles. And we peel jack seven spades and cut off and make it 45 to go. Only the big blind calls. Same guy from the pocket king's hand. And we flop a gut shot and a backdoor flush draw. And when we're checked to, uh, I'm gonna have a lot of small bets here. So I bet 35 and he does call. Looking to turn a little bit of equity here, maybe a gut shot or a flush card. And we do turn a flush draw. So when the big blind checks to us, I'm gonna size up here and try to fold out a lot of his range. Uh, I think I'd be doing this with many combinations here on a blank card like a three. So I do bet $150 and he puts in the call. We're gonna have uh, a lot of bluffs here on this river when we don't improve, but we actually do improve and we make a flush. So I use a size that I'm gonna use with value and bluffs. I bet four and a quarter into 470. Pretty big sizing here. I'm trying to look polar. It's a polar situation. Villain puts in the call and we show the runner runner, nothing funner. We pick up ace queen offsuit on the button here and make it 25 to go. That's gonna be a standard size with range for me on the button in a 510 game. And the small blind makes it $80. He's a guy I played with years ago but haven't played with him recently. And I say fuck that, I'm gonna make it $210. I'm gonna four bet for value versus this small blind three bet. And he calls, so I'm a little bit scared now when he does put in the call. Flop comes down 976 rainbow. I'm not really gonna have any of this. He probably isn't either, and when he checks, I decide to check it back. Turns a five. Again, the card that probably doesn't really help either of us, and when he checks, I think I'm still kind of in give up mode here, and I do check. The river's a really interesting one. It's an eight, so there's a straight on board now. Any 10 makes a straight. Jack 10's a straight, and either of us could have pocket 10s. 
but when he checks for a third time, I decide there's no chance this guy has pocket tens. And while I probably don't either, I decide to bet 500 trying to move him off the chop. You kind of hear him go back and forth about whether or not I could have tens. He eventually does decide to fold, so we pick up a nice one there. In this next hand, we pick up pocket kings in the big blind, and after the small blind completes, we make it 40 to go, and he does call. Amazing flop for us, middle set on a board that's extremely favorable for our range, and when he checks, we bet $25, villain calls. Turn is really bad though, any jack makes a straight now, and I'm wondering if my pocket kings are gonna go down in flames again, and it goes check, check. On the river, we now make a full house, and I'm loving life. And when the villain bets $85, I'm thinking he's heavily, heavily weighted towards a jack. He might have some aces too. And so I go with a pretty big size here of 450, expecting that he's gonna have a lot of hands he can call with. The villain does contemplate for a little while here. And eventually puts in the call. He gets the bad news, king's full for us, and the poker gods are shining on us a little bit here as kings do hold up this time. We ship just over a thousand dollar pot. We're running super hot preflop today when we peel two aces and hijack. We've already had kings twice today. Now we got pocket rockets. We make it 35 to go and an extremely passive player on the button makes it $160. I think this is going to be really, really strong hands from him, given what I've seen in my sample. So when I'm trying to decide what size to go, I'm probably going to go a little bigger than I normally would, and I decide to go 550. I am expecting him to call this pretty frequently. He does put in the call, and we're headed to a flop. $1,150 in the middle, and it comes... 10, 10, 9, 2 spades. I think I should always be betting extremely small here, and I actually make a mistake. I bet a little bit too large. I bet four and a quarter. Good thing for us is that the villain does put in the call, and SPR is extremely low headed to the turn. When we get a blank and only $900 behind, we don't really have any moves. This is always going to be Rip City all in. On. 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 Unfortunately, the villain folds really, really fast, which is quite surprising given the size of the pot and the price he was getting, but a good pot for us nonetheless. We're up about $1,900 just a couple hours into the session, which is a pleasant surprise since things have been going pretty rough for us in LA. And this pot is a six-way limp pot, including the button who is a very good pro. When the flop comes down, Jack-10, 7-2 diamonds, I decide to lead in the field with my top two for $35. Only the button is going to call here. The turn is incredible for us. We turn top full and a flush comes in. And I have to decide between continuing betting and checking with the antenna check raising. And I decide to go with a check. The good pro bets 45 from the button. And in this spot, I think he's gonna be really, really flush heavy. He sometimes is also gonna have a straight. He's completely uncapped here. And with top full, all I can really think about is what size do I wanna raise? So I go with 220 and it's back on the button. And the button shocks me. He three bets turn. He makes it 745 to go. And I've played a lot of limp pots in my time as a pro. And I can't recall one against another really good pro where it goes check, bet, check, raise, three bet. And all the alarm bells are going off for me because certainly he's got many combos of Jack 10, just like I do, given that he overlimped the button. 
And I think he can also have two sevens, maybe some jack seven suited, although that seems a little ambitious. Two tens would certainly have raised preflop, so I'm taking that out of his range. There's only one combo that beats us. It's nine eight of diamonds. And I'm fearing that a little bit, but I do put in the call. So we got a pretty big pot here that started out as a limp pot. And the river's a total brick, given that flushes and full houses are the most likely things we can have. I do check. I'm a little bit fearing that he's got the 9 8 of diamonds, but at the same time, we've got top full. And when he makes a bet of $1,300, I have a decision to make between raising and calling. Maybe I could fold, but probably not. A 9 8 of diamonds? Good. Out. And this is just a total gut punch to us. I've been running really cold in LA and I pay this one off. Disgusting, he makes a straight flush there. We pick up our absolute favorite hand here, feeling a little decimated and a little depressed, but ace king off our favorite hand. We make it 35 to go. When the low jack three bets to 90 and the button cold calls. Obviously, I'm going to put in the four ball here. We make it look like 400, which is going to put both players in effectively. They're both quite short. Low jack calls, button puts in 410, so I got to throw in the extra $10. I got that beat right now. I do not have that beat. Low jack reveals ace queen and button reveals aces. This is mega tilting. Things aren't going our way. And the ace king continues to fail us. but it's fair. Yeah. Five. Don't even really know what kind of flop I'm going to need here. I kind of uh, black out as the flop's coming down. I basically said fuck it. Didn't even record what the board was, but it was no help to us. And Ace King goes down once again, and we're donators. <laughs> it's been a pretty big come down for us when we look down at two nines in the low jack and make it 35 to go. We pick up three calls and we're headed to a flop four ways. The flop is ace high and extremely wet and we have flop bottom set. So there's a ton to get value from here with our bottom set. And when it's checked to us, we bet $90. The big blind decides to put in a check raise to 300, and now we've got two options. We can call and look to get the money in on the turn, or we could just three bet right now. Oh. I do decide to put him in for $1,200 effective. Hey, you know the crazy thing is, fuck, bro. Oh. Nothing else? Once or twice. <laughs> We're gonna go once. <laughs> the villain reveals Jack Nine for flop bottom two. It's a cooler situation, and we finally get a hold which is feeling really good, and we're about even for the day after all the theatrics. Hey guys, I'm uh, back at my Airbnb. Just got back here, it's about 12.30 in the morning. We were in for $3,000, out for $3,070. So we did win $70, played a total eight and a half hours, Got into a little bit of verbal fisticuffs. Little lesson for everybody before I go. Little little live king lesson here. If somebody at the table loses a substantial pot, this is something that I saw happen today. If they lose a substantial pot, do everyone else a, at the table a favor. Don't talk about what how obvious it was that this guy could have had that or everybody knew he had a boat or this or that. You know, when you see the cards face up, it's really, really, really easy to say oh it was so obvious you know you don't kill other people's action and you don't talk about how bad other people play it's, it's just uncouth not reasonable bad for the game it's just entirely terrible i got into a little bit of verbal fisticuffs when someone did this i don't really give a fuck about that hand and you guys have been talking about it for five minutes the hand happened five minutes ago nobody really cares i mean that kind of led to a little a little back and forth between me and this guy. Everyone starts talking about the quote-unquote strategy in the hand. 
Well, let me tell you what the fucking reality of the strategy of this hand was that people were talking about. One guy made a really strong hand. The other guy who was in the tank also had a really, really strong hand. And then the guy who had the really, really strong hand called the guy who moved all in and he lost. And guess what? Sometimes two really strong hands run into each other, just like happened to me today. Or, you know, a guy raises or a guy shoves, the other guy calls, and then guess what? Somebody fucking loses. That's poker. So yeah, that kind of shit frustrates me. Don't be the guy or guys. Don't chat with people at the table incessantly about some super cooler ass hand and how you would have gotten away from it or how it was so obvious that somebody had X. And by the way, this was not my Jack-10 hand. Have fun at the table, be reasonable. That's it. Long sesh, 170 bucks. Hopefully the tide starts turning here in LA because we don't have a lot working for us right now. Love to hear from you guys. Really having fun with these vlogs. Any questions I can answer, shoot them in the comments section. I'm gonna come back to you and I will see you guys soon. Live King out.